rate, I'm having one of those weeks this week. Nothing has gone according to plan. In today's video, I'd intended reviewing a barber bag that I've been carrying around with me for a couple of months now. A really handy piece of kit that I thought people might be interested in. I went to a remote location, a location that I've used for years, where you can go there and you never see anyone. But since the lockdowns, this place has become like Piccadilly Circus within half an hour of me starting filming. Everybody and the dog turned up. And I waited and I waited and I waited and the place just got fuller and fuller so I had to give up in the end. Now part of the problem, although I have to confess it is a nice problem, is the bullet. Young people and old people, males and females, motorcyclists and non-motorcyclists. The bullet is a magnet, it's an object of curiosity and admiration. I was relaxing in the bath this morning, trying to work out how I was going to pull all this together, you know, get the footage finished and get it all edited. And my mind wandered off onto one of those sort of winding roads of thought. You know what I mean? You start thinking about one thing and then 10 minutes later, you're thinking about something else completely different and you've no idea how your mind got you there. It started off when I laid back to wash my hair and I realised that my beard had reached such magnificent proportions that it now had started to float in the water. A major and most satisfying achievement in my book. And then I started to compare that with the sense of achievement that you get when you've serviced your own motorcycle. That satisfying first ride when you know that everything has been done absolutely spot on properly. And you've also saved yourself a small fortune, absent of any worry that the job might not have been done correctly. Then inevitably, as it always does, my mind shifted over to the bullet. I know a lot of people don't get the bullet, they don't understand it, but for those who do, this bike is bewitching. I've heard rumours that Royal Enfield is planning to build another limited production run of 450 bikes because the demand is still there and someone told me the other day that he was in a dealership that had a new Tribute Black model still on the showroom floor and they were asking £7,000 for it. Okay, I know that the bullet has had to evolve over the years, otherwise it would have to have been discontinued 20 years ago. But still, despite the upgrading and modifications that Royal Enfield have carried out over the years, this bike is totally irrelevant in the modern world. It has no place in the hustle and bustle of modern high-powered motorcycling. The bullet, or Royal Enfield Classic 500, is a dinosaur from a bygone era. If it had been a car, it would have been consigned to the history books 60 years ago. I realise that a major contributing factor to the fact that it still exists is the unique circumstances under which it began to be built in India 70-something years ago. Circumstances that personally I'm very thankful for. Because despite the fact that I have six bikes to choose from, the bullet is the bike I gravitate to all the time, every time. I'll often decide to take a ride on the bobber, but I'll end up taking the bullet out. I'll decide to go for a ride on the interceptor, but I'll take the bullet out. And it's the same even with the Continental GT. There's something on a subconscious level with the bullet that just seems to control your behaviour. I've come to the conclusion that the Royal Enfield Classic 500 is the quintessential gentleman's motorcycle. I'll try to explain. You see, most bikes don't suit the riders, so riders will try to change the bike to suit them, and if they can't achieve that, they'll chop that bike in and get something else. In many ways, the bullet is the most inadequate motorcycle I've ever owned. It's far, far, far from perfect. Unrefined, rough around the edges, 
underpowered and yes I've added a few baubles and made one or two modifications but it's not the same as those that you make to other bikes it's not for the same reasons you see owning a bullet is not like owning a motorcycle it's like having a mistress those add-on baubles are not for you they're for hair sort of like flowers and jewellery and you don't bend hair to your will she sort of educates you to adapt to hair and if you're wise enough to allow hair to do that the rewards are immeasurable it doesn't actually matter how old you are to be able to appreciate a bullet but you do need a maturity of mind the bullet is not about nostalgia the bullet is a bike for a man who has reached where he wants to be. He's got to the point in life where he's comfortable with who he is and he no longer has anything to prove to anyone. I remember reading an old advertising brochure online for Rolls Royce from some time back in the dim and distant past, listing all the features and the benefits of that particular model of Rolls Royce, but when it got to the performance specifications, you know, horsepower, top speed, that kind of thing, Rolls Royce simply listed it as adequate. And that's the bullet. It's adequate. It's not going to set the world on fire. It's adequate. With just enough performance to reward you with exquisite riding pleasure if you hustle it a bit. The suspension's plush and accommodating with a sprung seat that just adds to your riding pleasure. Overall, she's a package that, to turn a well-known phrase on its head, allows you to arrive at your destination stared rather than shaken. She is the ultimate gentleman's motorcycle. If you asked someone who they considered to be the ultimate gentleman, either factual or fictitious characters, I would wager that most people would name James Bond. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I wanted to grow up to be just like James Bond. It didn't quite work out that way, though. But Ian Fleming's character is the ultimate gentleman. A man who has nothing to prove. A man who can acquit himself well in any situation. He fits in anywhere. He's calm, he's confident, and he always gets the job done. Interestingly, in Ian Fleming's books, the James Bond character drove a 1930s Bentley. A vehicle that even at the time of writing had had its day, it was a has-been. No longer relevant for those times. But Fleming realised that that is exactly what James Bond would drive. It suited his personality, it did what he needed it to do. He was a character who had nothing to prove to anyone. And that vehicle made that statement. Now, interestingly, at the beginning of those film franchises, the directors decided that Bond needed something more modern, more cutting edge. And he was given the Aston Martin DB5, which disappeared and was replaced by other, even more modern cars as the film franchises rode on. That is until about 10 years ago, when it suddenly clicked with someone involved with the franchise, the statement that Fleming was trying to make. And that DB5, a car that is now getting on for 60 years old and would struggle to outperform an average family hatchback, has appeared in every film since. The bullet is derived from an era of gentlemen, the civilised seating position and deep valanced mudguards, engineered to protect the riders stylish brogues, neatly pressed trousers, tweed sports jacket and crisply pressed clean shirt complete with tie. So a gentleman could ride to his destination in all weathers and arrive fit for purpose and presentable. Elements that for the most part have been retained on the bullet throughout its production. Still allowing the rider to travel in a stately manner turning up at his destination refreshed 
relatively clean and ready to do whatever he's got to do. I've owned a lot of bikes in my time and the Bullet is, without any shadow of a doubt, the most comfortable bike I've ever owned. I believe she truly is a bike that sorts out the boys from the gentlemen. I'm sure a lot of Bullet owners can relate to this. Many is the time I've been travelling down the road on the Bullet, nearing the legal speed limit, only to be overtaken by a group of 40 something year old power rangers revving their engines popping wheelies and weaving in and out of the traffic all trying way too desperately to get noticed checking the mirrors out as the speed off into the distance to see what your reaction was and whether you're going to attempt to give chase and then trying to get the knee down on the next bend but embarrassingly missing the road surface by about eight inches and what goes through my mind in those circumstances is always the same thing mild amusement slight embarrassment for them not for me relief that i outgrew that mindset in my early 20s and gratitude that i ride a bullet right i'm off to talk to sam at moto now about how we're going to fit some machine guns to the front indicators on my bullet i am of course going to be back next week so until then keep calm carry on ride safely and i'll see you next week (laughs) 